Hey, what's going on my fellow astronomers? This is Kokakis 762 by 54R here. And uh, right now I'm currently set up in my backyard and uh, we are waiting to... Uh, got a little bit of a storm front moving through the area of Buckeye right now in Arizona. Uh, They're calling for about a 30% chance of rain in our area, but um, uh, that warning has since uh, subsided by now. Uh, but I do have to wait for these little clouds to um, go ahead and... Uh, uh, dissipate and move on to the uh, northwest so we're waiting for that but anyway right now as you can see in this little quick sna uh, snapshot video um, I do have my Mead LXD 75 uh, go to mount set up this is my EQ and on the top of this I have my Orion Star Blast uh, 4.5 inch imaging OTA it's a, this is a reflector design and um, I'm just uh, doing a uh, uh, I'm training on Octurus right now. I just did a quick little alignment, and right now I'm training the periodic air correction on the uh, Audio Star controller. That's one of the things I love about the Audio Star controller with Meads uh, telescopes and hardware. They are interchangeable between the mounts as far as the uh, LX90. Um, you guys all saw that in the review I just did. Uh, but I can also use the Audio Star 497 controller, the modified, the updated one, also on the LXD75 Go To mounts. So, uh, anyway, we're going to do a quick little uh, alignment here, and, well, the alignment's done, I'm sorry, we're going to do a quick little uh, uh, PEC training session, so I can get this thing ready to go for tonight, and we're going to do a little bit of astrophotography with some galaxies and nebula, and star clusters, and I'll be posting that up on the, uh, inter uh, on my uh, channel. So, stay tuned for that, and I'll get back to you guys here in a little bit. Okay, guys, uh, really quickly, uh, seven, uh, Skokakis 762 by 54R back with you guys here. I just want to take you on a quick little uh, tour of my LXD 75 mount and my current setup in my backyard right now. Um, there's a couple good things I, I really love about this LXD 75. Now, uh, we'll be doing a more in-depth review uh, in regards to this EQ mount, uh, what the cons and the, the pros and cons are of this particular mount. Um, what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are, what it is capable of doing, uh, uh, minus, of course, auto-guiding and stuff like that. I just want to make a quick little note. Most of my photography I do with the uh, telescopes, I do it unguided. Um, unfortunately, I just don't have the money right now um, to go ahead and invest heavily on a good um, auto-guiding system. Um, eventually, I will get down that to that road. I'll cross that bridge when I get there, but Right now, I'm just having a, a, a heck of a time. I'm having a ball, uh, just really uh, messing around with the LXD75. It is capable of doing some long, long exposure astrophotography in its standard polar alignment mode. A lot of people don't really understand that or realize that about these mounts. They are actually very accurate. And if you excuse the bugs, ladies and gentlemen, they're kind of going by my light here. So just kind of ignore those if you can. But as you can see right here, I got the uh, Audio Star plugged in and uh, it's plugged into the main system and it's, it's running pretty good right now um, I have this uh, really cool little uh, accessory tray um, right here if you can see that let me point this out right here this is an Astro Zap uh, accessory tray that I got that's uh, exclusively designed for the LXD 75 go-to mounts and it's actually really cool because I can actually put two inch eyepieces 1.25 inch eyepieces the holes go all the way around the perimeter of that little uh, little accessory tray it also comes with a nice little bubble level, which is actually pretty accurate. I've actually verified the accuracy using my torpedo level on the telescope itself, uh, or the mount itself, and it actually it matches right up. Um, the, one of the cool things about this mount is me took the time to go ahead and put uh, markings on your castings so you can go ahead and uh, put the telescope back into its home position. Um, usually these come, uh, they're, they're cast white just like the rest of the mount. So I took a, a permanent marker and I kind of marked them up so I can see them in the dark with a light, with my red light going on. Um, unfortunately, uh, and I'm a honestly I'm a little disappointed by it, but Mead uh, discontinued the um, LXD75 line of telescopes. Uh, anybody who's familiar with Mead Instruments knows that they came out with the LXD75 for a while. Uh, all the way from reflectors to Schmidt Cassegrins and to their awesome, awesome Schmidt Newtonian designs from the 6 inch all the way up to the 10 inch. And for whatever reason, I don't understand why Mead, and it's just my opinion, I don't understand why Mead 
uh, decided to go ahead and discontinue the LXD 75 line. Um, I mean, you 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 could have bought the you back 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 in the day. Uh, recently, it's a couple months ago before they fully discontinued these. You can get these mounts brand new for like six ninety nine, and and it's a very very good mount. They're equipped with a uh, they do come equipped with a uh, a polar alignment scope illuminated. I don't have my illuminator on there right now, but I, I took that off because the battery's died. I haven't put the batteries back into it yet, but it's an outstanding solid little mount. It's lightweight, so it's easy to move around, and it comes with a good spreader. It has really good fasteners and lockers on it. It's got the nice little two inch steel legs on there. It's a very accurate mount. And it's just a very, very good design. I don't for the life of me understand why Meade decided to go ahead and discontinue this. In my personal opinion, I think it was a very stupid move on the uh, on the executive side, the management side of Meade Instruments to discontinue this for a couple reasons. One, you had a good product that you know, it, it had its it had its fair share of a little bit of problems, you know, from the LXD 55 line, but the LXD 75 line was the tele they, they refined it, they re they redesigned it, and it worked phenomenally well. So you know, one of the reasons, oh, hang on, I got a plane crossing. Yep, the little Cessna. Maybe I can get it for you. Ah, there it is, a little pilot flying around. Okay, back to the telescope. So anyway. <sighs> Me personally, because I am a huge Mead Instruments fan, I've grown up using Meads. I like Celestron, don't get me wrong, I like Orion, I do own both of them. I do, I do own all kinds of these types of telescopes, but Mead has a special place in my heart. And when I found out that they, dis that, that they discontinued the LXD-75, um, it really kind of ticked me off, because here's what Mead did. When Mead discontinued this line, they basically shut out a good portion of amateur backyard astronomers, because Unfortunately, in today's economy, a lot of us can't afford to go out and buy the brand new LX80. We can't go out and buy the LX600 or the LX800 line of telescopes. Don't get me wrong. They're awesome, outstanding platforms, but it, have you people seen the price tag, the entry-level price tag for some of these setups? I mean, my God, it's like five to $6,000. So I think Mead made a really bad move on discontinuing this line of telescopes and mounts because this was the gateway to amateur astronomers on a budget who wanted good equipment. And unfortunately, that's, that's just one of the things about Mead Instruments. Um, they, they, every now and then, they, they just seem to make really retarded decisions. And honestly, you know, in my opinion, if Mead keeps this up, uh, eventually, they're going to be they're 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 going to they're going to slit their own throat. They're going to they're going to they're going to cut their feet off at their own ankles. Okay, because they they are they are effectively going to go ahead and just basically wipe themselves out of the uh, the amateur backyard astronomer market. Yeah, they got their nice little LX 80s and LX 3 you know 600 and LX 800 line of telescopes with the Starlock technology, and that's really cool stuff. But again. I don't have $6,000, and I'm sure a lot of you don't have $6,000. $6,000, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lot of money to get a telescope. And basically, you know, I'll bet your money Celestron right now is just smiling and grinning because they're like, okay, you, you guys want to discontinue that cool little line? You basically just wiped out half your market. So, you know, that's just my personal opinion that I think me did a really bad move discontinuing this line of telescopes and mounts, the LXD-75. This is a rock-solid mount. This mount that I'm, I'm showing you right now actually fell over in a windstorm. It literally fell over. It destroyed an OTA I had on it, but the mount itself, surprisingly and to my utter disbelief, survived the fall. It didn't damage the motor housings. It didn't damage the tripod at all. This thing is rock-solid. So, again, why they decided to do that, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but, you know, whatever. Some, some egghead that was running Mead Instruments decided to go, hmm, let's get rid of the LXD-75, and let's, let's, you know, because you can get those, you know, people can buy those telescopes and mounts for a little under $1,000. Let's get rid of that, and let's come out with something that's like five, $6,000 and, and really go after the market. Yeah, good going, Mead. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. You don't have to like it. But... That's, that's just the way I feel. I think they made a really bad move. So anyway, uh, I'll keep bringing you videos all night long. I'm just waiting for this. Um, the periodic error correction is almost done. The training is almost done. And I'm just waiting for a little bit more cloud cover to clear. And uh, we'll get going. And uh, I'll bring you guys a quick little slideshow in here in a couple of days of the, uh, 
of the um, targets we're going to get. I really wish that dog over there would shut up, but it won't do it. Uh, anyway, so I'll bring you guys some more uh, videos and, and uh, discussion on this mount. And uh, always uh, remember, uh, probably tomorrow or maybe Monday, I'm going to do a completely full review, a technical review on the LXD75 EQ German Equatorial Mount. So stay tuned and we'll go from there.